Designing and building any speaker requires going through a number of steps and setting a few goals to reach the desired outcome. In this case, my first step is to set the first goal to design a two-way stereo speaker that I can initially use as front and left speakers for my home theater system. And this project will then also be part of a larger project uh, that involves building an entire home theater speaker set. A relatively small two-way speaker will be ideal for smaller to medium-sized spaces and is why I'm opting as my second goal to build a smaller speaker. However, the space I plan to use these in is fairly large and having speakers that is larger with more output will certainly benefit the overall experience for a larger home theatre space. So at the later stage in the home theatre project, I will add a section with two drivers to the bottom of the two-way speaker that will essentially make it a floor standing speaker and provide me with that extra power that I will need. If you then opt to build this project yourself uh, for which I will draw up build plans, you can start small and then expand as you see the need to. The second step then is to select drivers. This is not a cost no option build, so I am looking for drivers that are very good value for money and something that typically performs above its price bracket. For the midwoofer, I selected uh, the Silver Flute W14RC25, and this is uh, with a 4 ohm uh, resistance. Uh, this is a 5.5 inch driver that features a very good cast aluminium frame uh, or basket, uh, and the current material is a combination of wool and paper fibers. Uh, for the price of around uh, 23 uh, US dollars at the time of this video, uh, the build quality is really excellent. I can't uh, fault it. I've used this woofer before and I must say that I have been very impressed with it. Uh, it produces a very pleasing uh, warm sound that is in my opinion uh, ideal for vocals and typical of uh, paper based uh, cones. Uh, and also something that I prefer when listening to music. For the tweeter, I selected the PLS uh, XT25SC90, also a 4 ohm version. This is a ring radiator tweeter uh, that can go all the way up to 40,000 hertz. Uh, it has a small flange, only about uh, 65 millimeters in diameter, uh, and it's ideal for a compact uh, box design. Uh, I will put purchase links to both the woofer and the tweeter in the description below. Uh, having an initial look at the two drivers uh, frequency response grass, I'm hoping that I can cross these two over at about uh, 3000 hertz. Uh, these also have a similar sensitivity rating of about 89 to 90 decibels. Uh, you can never exactly predict how many crossover components you'll need, uh, but I'm hoping uh, to get the cost for the drivers uh, and the crossover components in at least uh, under $150. Uh, okay, so over to the measuring the specs of the woofer so that I can determine uh, the optimal enclosure size for my build. I am using the Dayton Audio Test System from Parts Express. Uh, there's a link in the description below to measure the Thela Small specifications of the woofer. These specs will allow me to model the ideal enclosure size. Here's a quick snapshot of the specs that I got. I measured a few uh, of these drivers and the specs are all within acceptable tolerance. We do not need to measure the tweeter as it has no influence on the enclosure size. To model the enclosure I use WinISD. I am opting for a base reflex or ported enclosure for this design. After adding the new driver I opt for an enclosure size of 10 litres with a F3 of 53 Hz. I can achieve a slightly lower F3, but then I will compromise on the smaller enclosure size that I'm aiming for, and since this is essentially for home theater use, they will be crossed over to the subwoofer at at least 80 Hz. Now that I have all the specs that I require, we can go ahead and design the enclosure. I'm using SketchUp. I start by laying out the baffle and work my way back from there. To achieve a true 10 litre internal volume, I need to compensate for the volume of the driver, the port, the crossover and the inside brace. 
I've worked this out to be roughly 1.35 liters. My final internal volume will thus be 11.35 liters. The enclosure will be made of 16mm MDF and I'm using 15mm birch plywood for the sides. Using 60mm MDF for the sides is also an option and the extra 1mm added to either side of the baffle width will not have a major effect on the final frequency response. It is however important to note that sticking to the final baffle dimensions is crucial to the outcome of the modeled frequency response. If you make it significantly taller or wider, the measured response will be different and the crossover will not take that into account, resulting in possible dips and peaks in your final response graph. The same goes if you reposition the drivers on the baffle. To design the crossover we need to build an enclosure, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next part of this build, building the enclosure. So thank you for watching, if you want to support me further, please help me by becoming a patron on my Patreon page, where I post more behind the scenes information on my builds and projects. The link is in the description below. Thank you for watching, until next time, adios.